Hi, welcome to the second Lua tutorial video that I'm working on. This is a strings module video. My plan is to cover the entire module that, that's in the standard library, the strings module, everything in it. Um, I'm changing the format a little bit for this video. I'm learning from the last one. I've increased the font size and I hope it's more legible. Maybe it's too small. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and I decided to use this uh, video format because it's what I do when I stream. And um, I just I think videos are sort of more fun to watch when you can see the speaker. That's my uh, opinion. So I'm going to go with that. And it's instead of being edited, it's one live take. So I'll make mistakes for sure. All right, let's get started. So. Before I dive into the functions in the strings module, um, I want to mention again as a review what the format is in Lua for specifying a string. So I can do single quotes. I'll use English words here. I can use double quotes. And I can use um, a different format which is the double square brackets and that allows you to do uh, multi-line strings so uh, this is line one two three and so now if I check out string s3 I see that it has effectively it has four lines each each of those lines is followed by a new line. Um, the, and there's technically there's another way, and I guess I'll mention it since I'm trying to be complete, which is that I can put an arbitrary number of equal signs um, between these square brackets. It's a little bit obscure to do this. This is a little string. Um, and not only can I include new line characters here, but I can include things like a backslash n, um, or a single backslash here, or two backslashes. And we'll see in the end result that all of those are interpreted literally. None of them are translated into uh, escaped sort of sequences. So, <clears throat> and that would have worked with any number of uh, equal signs, as long as it's matched. So here's a weird case, just to show you <laughs> that uh, the number of equal signs have to match. That's kind of, I'm doing a little bit of weird stuff right there. And actually, you know, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to increase the font size because I really want people to be able to read all of this clearly. Okay, that's how you specify literal strings in Lua. Now, let's get into the string module itself. So let me make sure, I think it's, yeah, it's singular. It's actually yeah, the string module. It's part of the standard library. So um, as you might guess, um, string up, upper turn something into uppercase. Oops, I made a mistake. It's string dot upper if you call it as an element of the string table. Now, here's the thing. Basically every function in the string library takes a string as its first argument. And so what Lua does is that every string variable has um, a meta table that says the index is the string table. What that does effectively is that means for every string variable, you can use a colon syntax and then call anything in the string uh, module as if it were uh, a method of that string. Now, I need a string with some capitals in it. I'll, I'll use S3 because I'm going to show you S3 lower, which is, you know, it converts all the letters to lowercase. Okay, so just to reiterate, I can use the syntax string dot function and then the string would be the first function argument. Or I can use the syntax variable name colon, the name of the method to call. Okay. Um, so, and so let's see, repeat. Repeats it as many times as you want. So that's just hi there concatenated with itself. And that's useful for doing things like if I have like a space character and I want to indent something, then I can say, well, what's um, space repeated? you know, 30 times followed by, 
that I've just sort of indented something without having to actually type a literal string of a lot of spaces. Uh, and then reverse does what you might expect, it reverses the string. And now we get some more interesting stuff. Byte. So byte, you give it, um, if you, by default if you give it one argument, it'll tell you the ASCII number or the ASCII code of that character. And then just to, um, I'm going to sort of make this more clear, I'll use the substring method. So I'll explain both of you at the same time. Substring by default takes two arguments. The first argument is the starting index, which, you know, Lua strings, just like everything in Lua, are one based. So one is the first character in the string. And then the second number that is an argument to sub, substring, is the ending index. Okay, so h, little h, has ASCII code 104 because that's what the, the byte method returns. Now, if I give two arguments to byte, then it returns however many uh, numbers are in that range. So I could, I could actually assign it like this as return values. Um, and those are going to be the ASCII codes of those four characters in the string. So the first index is the starting character, and the second argument to byte is the ending character in the string. Um, to complete the explanation of sub, if you just give it, let's see, I'm going to uh, choose a number that will exclude the word this. If you just give it one argument, then it goes until the end of the string. So this is basically a suffix. It starts at the sixth character in this example and goes all the way to the end of the string. Um, another interesting thing that you can do in with using indices in Lua is that you can use negative numbers. Negative one means the last character. So 1 to negative 1 here will mean the full string. Negative 2 would mean the second to last character. Okay, so that's byte and sub. Now, care will convert a number into a, a string with that ASCII code. So 97, I believe, is the ASCII code for lowercase a. And so it returned a string with one character in it. And I believe that, if I remember correctly, if I give it multiple arguments, I think it's a variadic function, and if I give it multiple arguments, it will return a string with that many characters in it. Right. So what I've got in the return value is a single string with four characters, and it has the given ASCII values. And I can do interesting things. Lua strings can have value zero as a byte within the string. So uh, let me assign a stir with zero. Um, actually, I can do it in multiple ways. I can say ABC and then I can put a backslash and then a number in there. And uh, that will be a string that has a zero byte in it. Although when I try to print it out, zero byte is not printable, so we're not going to see it. Um, let me see if I can show you that that's happening. I can use the, the byte function. We can see the whole thing. Yeah, so there it is. We see that number zero in the return values. Um, so that's the difference between that and C strings, between Lua strings and C strings. Lua strings can contain zero bytes. And oh yeah, and just to be kind of complete, I'm going to actually check this because I forget. Yeah, so when I use the backslash notation with numbers, it's in base 10. In other languages, it might interpret it base, um, base 8 is popular, they call it octal, but I think that Lua always, yeah, Lua always has base 10, right, good to know. Now the length operator is the same thing as having a number assigned here, and that tells you the number of characters. So um, the string with zero, it includes the zero character as a character. Okay, so the length of a Lua string has nothing to do with being zero terminated. It's just how many characters are, are there. It's, think of it as a byte array, effectively. Um, and then if I, just to show you that the len, oh, I'm sorry, let me update the, uh, the slide to be reflecting what I'm talking about. So if I use the len function in the string table, it does exactly the same thing as the number sign as an operator. All right, now let's talk about the dump function. This one is pretty interesting. So 
I'm going to define a function that just prints out hi, because that's fun. Let's test it out. Cool. The dump function will return a string that is the bytecode of the Lua function given. Can't be a C function, has to be a Lua function. Uh, so this doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I could sort of look at it and guess, you know, standard in has something to do with where the string is going to go. And maybe it's stack based or something. But the point is that this is a string that's meant to be Lua facing. And actually what I can do is I can assign it to a, a variable. And then I can load it again using the load string function. Just to give it a different name, I added eyes and just say hi. Okay, so load string will take that bytecode. It can load string can handle like Lua itself. It can handle bytecode or Lua itself. Um, and now when I run, say hi, with all the eyes, it does the same thing as if you know it was the original function. And I can actually save that to disk, that bytecode, and load it from disk in a different session. So the string dot dump function gives you bytecode for any Lua function. Handy, right? Now, uh, string.format. String.format is Lua's version of printf. And basically everything that works in printf works in string.format. Uh, so, I, for example, I can say number equals, and then you put a percent %d, and I can say string equals, and then put a percent %s, and then separate arguments, I'll give it a number, let's give it 42, it's a nice number, and a string. And it fills in those values. Um, and just like C, I can use uh, more specific format specifiers. So I'll put some equal signs around here to show what's happening. Um, now I've put it percent %30s, and what that is going to do is going to pad the string until it's 30 characters wide. And um, just to show off one other feature of string.format, which is also in printf and C, I can put in negative 30s after the percent sign, and it will left justify instead of center uh, right justify. Um, and I want to show you one of my favorite tricks with string.format, which is I define a very act function called, I usually call it PR for print. You can call it whatever you want, really. It's your function. But then um, that's the whole function. Super short, but instead of just returning a string, it actually prints it out. Often I want to print a string and I want to use formatting all at once without having to be very verbose print, string, format, you know, per is much shorter. And now I can say, I can print whatever I want, like n equals percent. Uh, let me give you an example of a hex. Let's see if I'm doing this right. So 32 should be, yeah, ox20. Um, so percent x is going to print, it's gonna take a number, value and it's going to print it as a hexadecimal representation. There's one thing that Lua adds to printf style print um, format specifiers, which is percent %q. So I can say uh, print, this is using string.format, um, and then I can give it a string and it formats it so that Lua itself could read the string back. So the reason that's special is that, first of all, it encloses it in double quotes, and then if it has any special characters in it, Lua will escape those special characters for you so that uh, it basically plays nicely with text editors and that, you know, if there's a zero byte, you could save it as an ASC, a standard ASCII file that doesn't have zero bytes in it. Um, so basically what we've seen in this example is just adding double quotes with percent %q. Now let's look at a string with zero in it to see how it handles that case, and it, it gives us an escaped zero character, backslash zero. Uh, and then one more example, I'll look at, I forget my multi-line string, was it S5 was multi-line? No, and I can't press arrow up on this. Uh, which one? Is, okay, this one is a multi-line, and it escapes the new line characters. That's why you see those backslashes there. Okay, great. So that, we just, we actually covered the format function. Now we get to the fun stuff. Now we get to patterns. There are four pattern functions in the string table. And they, this is the last of the string table that I'm gonna cover. This is actually the last of the string table at all in Lua 5.1. Um, 
I didn't really say this before, but I'm focusing on Lua 5.1. And the reason I like to focus on that is because it is the most widely compatible version of Lua. There are several Lua implementations out in the wild. If you're writing for a game, or if you're writing for LuaJIT, or even if you're writing for the official one, everything I teach you in this video is relevant. You can use it. I could theoretically teach Lua 5.3, which is the current um, most modern version of Lua, but then you're actually limiting yourself to which implementations of Lua will work with your code. So it's a trade-off, like there are some more features in 5.3. There's a UTF uh, module, which handles UTF-8 style strings. UTF-8 strings can be stored in Lua 5.1, and you can do a lot with UTF-8 strings. You just, you don't have UTF-8 specific functions. You have these kind of 8-bit um, clean type of functions that just deal with arbitrary byte sequences, including UTF-8. Um, so that's just why I'm focusing on the 5.1 version. Let's get let's move on to patterns. That'll be the last major topic. Okay. I need a drink. So Lua patterns are basically regular expressions. They are not exactly regular expressions because they lack um, basically two features that regular expressions would normally have. The, the first feature is that if you are using what's called a capture in Lua, which is a sub-expression in parentheses, you can use those in Lua, but you cannot put a star or a plus or minus or a question mark after that. Um, and those operators, the star, the plus operators, for example, allow you to, you know, expect a varying number of what's in the parentheses in a regular expression. In Lua, you just, you're not allowed to do that. If you have an expression in the parentheses, you expect one of those to happen. There are ways to match um, like varying numbers of objects, but you have to work with a character class followed by a star or plus. Um, so you can, you can do a lot with Lua patterns. They are very useful. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you exactly what the differences are. Then the, the other major difference with regular expressions is that in a regular expression, you have this uh, vertical bar special character, and that means or. So if I were working in Python or Perl or, or anything with a regular expression library, normally I could put a bar in, I could have a string that's something like ABC or DEF, and then that would say match, well, depending on the precedence of operators. I think it would match in most cases either ABC or DEF. Um, and in Lua, just the character bar is just a literal character. It doesn't mean anything special. It doesn't mean or. It just means match the actual character bar. Okay, other than that, it is the same as regular expressions that you're used to. And in fact, it adds a couple things that I haven't seen in the regular expression engines that I am used to. Uh, so the magic characters that are usually there, and that are still there in Lua, are caret, which means match the beginning of the string, dollar sign, which means, means match the end. If you are used to a line-based regular expression engine, such as Python's, then uh, you may expect the regular expression matching to happen on a line basis, this line, this line, this line. In Lua, it's not like that. In Lua, it looks at the entire string as one object. So the dollar sign matches the end of the string, a new line character is just like any other character, just like the character like capital C. It, if you have a capital C in your pattern in Lua, and it matches capital C in the string. If you have like a, a white space matching element in the pattern in Lua, it matches possibly a new line. Doesn't care, it's the end of the line. Um, so dollar sign means the end of the string that's being searched. Parentheses uh, surround what are called captures. And I'll mention, I'll talk more about those. They work like sub-expressions in most other regular expressions. Uh, square brackets enclose what are called character classes, and that's just like other regular expressions. You, If you want to match one character that's in a class, so it could be like all the alphabet letters, all the numbers, all just the hex characters, A through F and 0 through 9 are the hex characters, for example. Uh, any white space character, you know. So you can use square brackets, and there are actually special character classes that are predefined for you to make it easier to work with common cases. 
The plus sign, just like the expression, means one or more of the previous character or character class. The star is the same, except it means zero or more. And then minus is the same as star, except that's non-greedy. And I'll try to give you an example to show you what I mean by non-greedy. Um, a question mark means zero or one of the previous character or character class. And dot, just like regular expressions, means one of any character. Okay, uh, and then, uh, so percent sign is the escape character, and what that means is if I want to match a literal, for example, open parenthesis, then I put in percent sign open parenthesis. Um, yeah, so here are the predefined character classes, and in order to help exp uh, show how those work, I am going to use the string dot match function as a beginning case. So let's look at string s1. Hi there. Uh, now what I can do is I can match a pattern. Now if there's no magic characters in the pattern, it will just find the literal. If there is no match, it'll return nil. That means no match. Um, now let me start using some special characters. I want to find the first thing, which is using alphabetic characters. So percent %a means alphabetic, percent %w means alphanumeric, alphabet or numbers. And then I want to say anything that's an alphanumeric character is matching one or more of those. And high is the first thing. And I could make it a little more interesting. I could say, okay, now I want to match uh, at least one, or exactly one space character, white space, space, tab, or new line are space characters for percent um, S purposes. And then percent W plus means one or more alphanumeric characters. And then in that case, it's going to match space there. Okay. Uh, I think most of these character classes that are predefined are straightforward. Character or control codes for sense mean things like a new line is a control code. If there's a delete key, the delete corresponds to like uh, control H. I don't know which letter the alphabet is. It's like 17 or something like that. Um, but in any case, those are all control codes or control characters. Um, now, the, there's two interesting cases. There's the balanced and the frontier character classes. So let me show you, actually this is a good time to show you the difference between greedy and non-greedy matching. Okay, so here's a string, and let's say I want to extract from this string uh, the first parentheses group. So then I want to match an open parenthesis. Open parentheses. I'm going to match a bunch of stuff until I get to the closed parentheses. You might think, oh great, that'll do what I want. I want to get ABC closed in parentheses. Is that going to work? No, no, well, first of all, I called that on the wrong string. But now you see, I actually got ABC and GHI and everything in between it. Um, so this shows the difference between a greedy matching and a non-greedy matching. Instead of being dot star, I use dot hyphen, which is a non-greedy version of star, and it's going to match the smallest number of characters it can until it gets to that close print. Okay, cool. So that shows why the non-greedy is useful. Now let's take a look at another string. Um, let's use nested parentheses. Um, and now let's say what I really want to match is I want to match the first parentheses uh, parenthesized substring, mean, where first means the first open parentheses, because it could mean, does that mean like DEF, because that's the first complete one, whereas the ABC whole thing is up to GHI, is the first um, one with the first open parentheses. So, I mean the one with the first open parentheses. Now in this case, both my greedy and my non-greedy um, techniques are going to fail. Uh, let me show you, so that didn't work, and let me try the greedy way. Darn, I have to leave pretty soon. All right, uh, that worked. Oh right, I, okay. It's because my example wasn't wasn't uh, evil enough to show you how it can fail. Okay, so we'll do we'll try the same thing. Um, you can I, can I think you can just eyeball it now and see why the non-greedy thing will fail. It'll fail for the same reason that it did last time I ran this. 
But now, now here, the greedy version also fails. So the non-greedy and the greedy version also fail to match this case. And I'm, all of this is leading up to showing you the percent %B uh, match. And what that will do is it will, uh, B stands for balance, and it matches, you give it two delimiters, open delimiter, closed delimiter, and it'll match <coughs> the, the first, or sort of like the next balanced pair of those delimiters allowing for nested things to be inside them. And it's great for parentheses, open, close, open and close square brackets, open and close curly brackets. That's kind of what it's made for. Now, a frontier character, um, let's see, a theory of the absent is a string that has T-H-E as a substring many places, but let's say I just want to match the word the. So a frontier um, character class will allow me to pick out the and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to use find instead of match. What find does is it returns the beginning and ending index in the string where the pattern matched. So in this case, it's finding the T-H-E in the word theory. But we just want the actual word the. But we don't want to actually match the spaces around it. So th there's a couple solutions. Actually, I can use what's called a capture. So I can say, okay, there's got to be a space here, and then I'm going to put in parentheses the word the, and then a space afterwards. And I'll tell you what's good about this is that we'll um, find what we want, and in this case, uh, let's see, 12 to 16. Ah, so there's a couple, There's one difficulty, which is 12 to 16 are the indices of the whole match, including the spaces, and we didn't really care about the spaces. Um, the word the is a return value because it's a capture. Anything in parentheses is returned from find as a capture. Uh, excuse me. Sorry about this. Okay. Um, and there's another problem which you can't see in this example, which is that what if the word does at the end of the string? Then there's no space after it or if it's at the beginning. So this is not a perfect solution to the problem, and the percent %f frontier character class is a better solution, and it says, if we're going from, so what's in square brackets here is a character class, and it says if we're going from outside of this character class to inside of this character class, then we can continue matching the string. But it's a zero with match. Okay, so this will give us 1315, which are the indices in the string of the character's T-H-E in the word the. That's exactly what we want. And basically, conceptually, what's happening in this case is it's saying, find the word the, and it has to be like, um, before the letter T is something that's just, anything that's not an alphanumeric character. Could be the beginning of the string. After the word letter E, something that is, again, not an alphanumeric character. So a frontier is a zero width match of a change of character class. That that is everything about patterns, about little patterns. Um, and I've covered the basics of match and find, so I'm going to quickly dive into G match and G sub. They are G match is written to iterate over things. So let me find my multi-line string here. Um, I'm going to say for word in S3 G match, and then I just I'm going to choose a pattern which is any string full of one or more alphanumeric characters. Print out the word. Let's we'll see what we get. So this is a great way to iterate over, um, iterate over you know words in a string, or let's say um, let me give like a URL example. Um, so in this case, I'm going to say like query equals hi and like language equals nus and uh, foo equals bar. Uh, so what I can do using a more complex usage of this, and I might get this wrong the first time I type it, but <clears throat> you can use captures to um, capture different elements so I can get more than one return value at a time. Um, so I want to match anything, let's see, the special characters are question mark and the ampersand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture Anything that is not a question mark, not an ampersand, and I want one or more of those. 
and then there's going to be equal sign, literally, and then we'll get the exact same expression here, not a question mark and not an ampersand. And let's print out KB. Oh, awesome, great. So there's like Gmatch just in a one line for loop there gives us a breakdown of key values from a URL. So it just kind of shows it's useful, right? Now G sub um, is a substitution, global substitution. G is global, I'm pretty sure is what it stands for. So for global substitution, the easiest way to use it is to give it a pattern that it will match. So I'll match, you know what I'll match? I'll match lowercase letters, and I will replace those with um, a single underscore. That's a very simple use case. Now I can do something more interesting. I can match, let's say, lowercase substrings, and I can replace those with two copies of themselves. I think that's what that'll do. Yeah, that's right. So you can see, instead of this, it says this, his, and then is, is. Um, and that's because percent zero in the replacement string represents the entire match. And if I had captures, percent one would be the first capture, percent two would be the second capture, etc. In GSUB, the replacement uh, argument doesn't have to be a string. It can be a table. It can be a function. And the function is the most general case. Let me show you an example of it being a table. Um, I am going to try to match. Um, let's see what I'll match. I'll just try to match keys. Let's see. I'll match keys, and then just to make sure that there's an equal sign on it right after it, I'll use this frontier class, and I'll say it has to be an equal sign after that. And then, um, actually, just to test it out, make sure I've got that pattern right. Oops, I um, I used the wrong string. All right, great. So it's it's getting the keys correctly. The second return value, by the way, three is the number of replacements made, which is useful for like counting the instances of a number string of a uh, substring or character within a string. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to use, instead of a string as the replacement value, I am going to use a table. And um, I can say, okay, if I see Q, I'm going to replace it with query. And if I see lang, I'm going to replace it with language. All right, And I'm leaving out one of the matches because you'll see what happens. So the foo equals bar is untouched because that key was absent from my replacement table. But otherwise, it makes the tables, uh, the replacements as per the table. And as a final example, um, I will use a function, and I'll use an anonymous function, and it will get one, this one will get one input parameter, which is the match, which is called M. And in this case, I'll just say match uh, equals M. I'll just print it out. And uh, what will end up happening is you can see that that function is being called um, with the values. Now this function didn't return anything, so it didn't make any substitutions. I could have changed. I could have actually returned a value from that string, and it would have actually made the substitution. So in this case, I'll return. Um, I'll kind of decorate the match by surrounding with some kind of custom delimiters. And then we can see it's still printing it out because the function prints those things out. But now every match of a key in this URL has these kind of decorated delimiters around it. Okay, that is everything in the string module. And you are now basically an expert, basically because if you just learned it, you don't have any experience. So go get some experience and enjoy your newfound power with the Lua string module. Thanks for watching.